to share with us his knowledge on EECA, may we call on our guest speaker for this afternoon from the Department of Energy. His name is Attorney Patrick T. Aquino. He is the Director of Energy Utilization Management Bureau of the Philippines Department of Energy. His engagement with the department spans over a decade. Initially, he served as part of the Office of the Secretary. From there, he held several key positions within the OE. Like in 2013, he became the Director for Information Technology Management Service, where he initiated the modernization of the information technology framework of the DOE. A year after that, he was appointed as Director for the Energy Utilization Management Bureau and pushed for the institutionalization of energy efficiency and conservation in the country. Issuances such as the Philippine Energy Standards and Labeling Program and the minimum energy pro performance standards were created during his tenure at EUMB in 2016. And these are among those essential components of the Energy Efficiency Conservation Act that was enacted in 2019. Do you know that it took like more than three decades, three, 30, 30, 30 years for its initial draft in 1988 to come into law? Now, Director Aquino, with the support of the Department of Energy, stands at the forefront of the implementation of EEA in the country. He is a Career Executive Service Officer, CESO 3, a, distinct, a distinction exclusive to a civil servant who has exceptional performance and have undergone through a stringent screening process, which is finalized by a presidential appointment. Guests, partners, let us welcome Director Patrick Aquino, CESO 3. Good afternoon. Uh, first off, we'd like to thank the SN Aboites Power Group uh, for inviting us uh, in this afternoon's uh, talk on your compliance with Republic Act 11285 or the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Act, or should I say opportunities provided uh, for your businesses of the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Act. Um, allow me briefly to do a short presentation, uh, an overview uh, for RA11285. So the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Act was um, signed into law by President Rodrigo Roa Duterte on the 12th of April in 2019. It also became effective uh, on the 22nd of May 2019. Uh, it seeks to institutionalize energy efficiency and conservation, enhance the efficient use of energy, and grant incentives to energy efficiency and conservation projects. Let me start off with the concept of energy service companies. Uh, which are governed by Department Circular Number DC 2020-09-0018 or the ESCO guidelines. Um, ESCOs are your partners in compliance with the EEC Act. Uh, they offer multi-technology services and goods towards the development and design of energy efficiency projects. Um, they deliver and guarantee energy savings and ensure cost-effective and optimal performance in your processes. At the start of February uh, this year, we do have 40 ESCOs with the DOE uh, flashed on your screen. We're also making headway in terms of the Philippine Energy Labeling Program or the PELP, which in turn to encourage the practice of EEC as a way of life uh, through the promotion and use of energy efficient products as well as the transformation uh, by regulating uh, the energy consuming products. Uh, there are twin issuances here, uh, which will be your PELP, as well as the minimum energy performance for products or MEPP. Um, in terms of objectives, PELP is on empowering the consumers at the point of sale uh, in choosing the energy efficient products. Um, it also helps uh, consumers realize energy savings uh, and the reduction of energy consumption, uh, as well as their bills through the use of these energy efficient products, 
uh, on the part of the MEPP, uh, we are aiming to eliminate the entry and sale of inefficient and substandard products in the local market, as well as contribute to um, the reduction of greenhouse gases. Uh, incidentally, these are the labels flashed on the screen uh, for the initial covered products, uh, uh, which would include lighting, refrigerators, television sets, just to name a few. In terms of responsibilities, uh, retailers, borders, distributors uh, are required to attach or affix or display the energy label, uh, exhibit it uh, in all publications, including advertising, uh, cooperate during the conduct of enforcement and monitoring activities of the DOE, as well as submit uh, information on inventory and sales for these energy consuming products. For designated establishments, and I think this is why one of the reasons why you are here, uh, there, there are essentially three categories, uh, all based on annual energy consumption, which is a combination of fuel and energy. It's really a private entered entity that uh, is classified as uh, energy intensive. Uh, the classification is other DEs at least 100,000 kilowatt are equivalent, but less than 500,000 kilowatt are equivalent. Type 1 designated establishment in excess of 500 kilowatt hour equivalent, but more than less than 4 million kilowatt hour equivalent. And type 2 designated establishments are in excess or higher than 4, 4 million kilowatt hour equivalent. These are governed by a memorandum circular MC 2020 05-001 issued last year. Uh, so what is the extent of the energy accounted for in these reports? All energy consuming processes are to be reported. It's a combination of both fuel and electricity, uh, which again leads down to the classification as an other type one or type two designated establishments. In terms of the obligation, um, one of which is the integration of uh, energy management systems. BEs, uh, maybe such as yourself, are encouraged but not mandated um, to get the ENMS uh, certification, but you are to integrate the framework within your operations. This will be deemed as a compliance. In terms of the obligations, uh, there's another one for type two, type one is to engage the services of an energy conservation officers or for type two, an energy manager. Uh, right now, it's just a registration as the certification would follow once the available training modules are made available. There's also an obligation for the designated establishment to notify the DOE on the appointment or separation from service of uh, a CECO or CEM within 10 working days from such incident. Another obligation is on the conduct of energy audits. Uh, frequently asked question is when do we consider the three year period? Uh, audits done in 2018 are valid to the this year, 2019 through next year, 2020 through 2023, and 2021 through 2024. The conduct of an energy audit should be done at least once every three years, either by a certified energy auditor or an accredited ESCO. Uh, the reports of these energy audits will also form part of your submission um, to the DOE. Uh, for type 1 and type 2 designated establishments, energy audit is mandatory. Another obligation is the integration or the implementation of energy efficiency and renewable energy projects. Uh, these are just but examples flash on your screen. It will include the reduction of building cooling demand through the co controlling of the solar gains, for example, natural ventilation, lighting system retrofit, um, having a building energy management system, the use of energy efficient appliances, uh, the adoption of energy conservation measures, and really the observance of the guidelines of energy conserving design of buildings during uh, retrofitting or if you do have new constructions. Another obligation is on the reportorial submissions. Uh, this will partake of the annual energy consumption report and the annual energy conservation report. Uh, part of what would be required from designated establishments would be EEC form one, registration of the energy manager. If that's your type two designated establishment, EEC form number two, the registration of the energy conservation officer 
if you are a type 1 designated establishment. For EEC form number 3, uh, that's your annual energy efficiency and conservation report. Form number 4 is your annual energy utilization report. Uh, the contents of this would be uh, in terms of the ongoing projects or for part one, these are again the examples. Note that these are the very same examples I flashed earlier on the screen with respect to energy efficiency and renewable energy projects that you could be implementing already as compliance to the, the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Act. Uh, the part B is on the actual energy consumption. Uh, again, this is desired that the five year be submitted. However, if it's unavailable, just submit what you can, uh, specifically from last year uh, and the year prior. Um, in terms of target setting, this will be your expected versus uh, your actual year on year as, as of the date of the submission. Um, and then in EEC form number four, this is the disaggregation uh, per business activity of the reports. Um, the forms uh, indicate again what these are uh, again the disaggregation with respect to uh, basic vehicle consumption and if you are going for a enterprise submission you are to do it uh, and submit the, the information uh, on the per facility although consolidated uh, by one the deadline for the submission of the forms uh, one through four is on the 15th of every april um, these are available again online, flashed on the screen is the QR code and the link that you can use to download these forms for accomplishment. Um, another topic is on the guidelines on energy conserving design for building. Incidentally, this was published uh, last uh, Friday. So it's expected to be effective on the 6th of uh, March this year. It really is encouraging the energy conserving design of buildings uh, of course, with due regard to cost effectiveness function, comfort, health, safety, and productivity. Uh, it covers the electrical loads of 112.5 uh, kVA or a floor, total gross floor area of 10,000 square meters. A lot of you are curious as to the incentives. Uh, these are being worked out uh, within the framework, of course, of CREATE. Uh, this is what the Board of Investment and the DOE has been working on. Uh, for the energy efficiency projects. Note that the project boundary threshold is at 15%. Uh, those in excess will get more than 100% in terms of the ITH. In terms of other non-fiscal incentives, uh, we do recognition programs. We've started off that one last year, and we will continue to do so uh, in championing and recognizing and awarding innovations in energy efficiency best practices uh, and projects. And again, that ends my slide. Um, thank you for your kind attention. If you do have questions, I will be here and my team will be here to answer them. Uh, again, thank you. Thank you, sir. And I see that our guests took in a lot of information from your presentation. So now let's go directly to the question from the, from the audience. Again, friends, if you have any question, kindly share it to us through Slido. So, um, sir, this is our first question. Will the implementation and compliance push through in April? Oh, that's a very thank you so much uh, for the question. And actually, that is a frequently asked question. Um, and the response is, yes, it will. Uh, if you recall, the MC 2020-05-0001 did contain a deferment of compliance. And this was brought about by Bayanihan 1. Uh, there is no such directive right now. So the it's full steam ahead. So we will be <laughs> expecting and requiring designated establishments to submit uh, compliance uh, on or before the 15th of April this year. Thank you. OK, so as we speak, yes, it will. Pangalawang tanong po, will the renewable energy completely replace non-RE sources in the future? Uh, again, thank you for the question. The goal of the DOE in the latest Philippine Energy Plan 2018-2040 is to increase the share of renewable energy. But for the purposes of energy security, it will be best that we still have a diverse set of mix. What we can tell you is that uh, for the forecast horizon, 
we are envisioning to hike the share of renewable energy in our requirements to at least 30%. And towards this, you've seen DOE initiate programs on the green energy auction. Uh, implementation is forthcoming later this year. The renewable portfolio standards. And of course, recently, if you were taking a look at the newspapers, uh, the guidelines or the adoption of the guidelines on energy conserving design for buildings did now include a specific requirement for new facilities within the coverage to have have, have at least one percent share of uh, renewable energy to meet their, their demand requirements so that is our i know it's not a direct answer jupiter but that's the best answer i can give to that question thank you thank you Ah, okay. Here is a question from Mama Maria Nica Paula Robles. Do we have to hire EM? Are there seminars for EM? Okay. Uh, oh, dominant questions. I can see all the questions all of a sudden. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you for the... I, I did mention to you that for the purposes of this compliance period, what you need to do if you fall into the type 2 designated establishment is just register uh, a personnel uh, for the energy manager. The certification program guidelines were just also issued the other week um, and it will be effective later, I think by March 6. So what is required for compliance and we will be accepting it as a compliance is that you just register the personnel who meets the minimum requirements. So the certification is pending. By next year cycle, when the certification programs are out, then they will be required uh, to undergo the certification. I hope that answers the question. Thank you, sir. Sir, I think the next question pertains to the circular issued last Friday, as you have mentioned. So can you please share about the mandatory use of renewable energy for building owners? Okay, for, for building owners, if you take a look at the, you know, it's a very long issuance, uh, but it's in page 66, 82, I think it's a subsection there. And that has been asked also by the media, is there any difference? Why was it included? If you take a look at the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Act, it highlights the role of both energy efficiency and renewable energy in sustainability. And I think those of you joining us here uh, with SNAP as your partner, that's the biggest thing that we would want to take away from here, is that having energy efficient practices on the demand partnered with supply on renewable energy is the way of the future. So for guidance in terms of the building owners, these are for new constructions, ulitin ko, new constructions and building retrofits within the effectivity of the guidelines. The guidelines was just published last Friday. If we comply with the 15-day effectivity requirement, it will take effect on March 6. But there might be those who would be asking, will it be on the ground already when I go for, for permits for the Office of Building Official? Will they know this already? Of course not. You know how it takes. There's a lag in terms of that, but we are doing the necessary roadshows for our OBO, especially for the cities and first class and second class municipalities nationwide within the coming months so that they will be equipped. Your Office of Building Officials at the local government unit will be equipped to evaluate these forms. It will not be DOE who will sign off on your compliance to the guidelines. We've had an understanding and an agreement with the DPWH that it will be through the office of the building official at the local government unit level who will be checking on the compliance with respect to the RE, for example, that particular portion of the circular from last week. So may check na ba yon? Tapos na ba ako dun, Jupiter? <laughs> yes. Uh, turn it. Thank you, po, Anna. That's a very timely clarification indeed. So next question, po. Um, do we have ESCOs entering the market to support the customers? Uh, actually, I, I did flash to you. Maglalambing tuloy ako now. I, I don't know if you have non-Filipino guests here, so if I can speak vernacular. But I was also rub as an abilities because the options that you're providing is only not on electricity supply. You are providing solutions. So I would strongly encourage you to join the pool of ESCOs uh, because right now, uh, as I've clarified, the certification for energy auditors individuals is not yet out and what we do recognize as compliance would be the audits being done by our ESCO partners and I did flash on the screen the 40 I will be sharing those materials with you sana next time snap is also part of that list so yes there are at least 40 ESCOs as of the start of this month who is ready and willing to help you with your compliance requirements 
Thank you. Thank you sir. I'm sure that's heard. That's heard. Okay, next question. <laughs> <laughs> what are the penalties for non-compliance to the EEC? Oh, that's a very good question. There are penalties. Uh, but as I've said, and I've done so many forums in, in the past webinars for the past month or so, what we're after for is compliance. Oh, I'm discounting. If you notice, I've, I've told the chambers, I've told foreign and local chambers about this. There are penalties. But in the approach of how we are doing with efficiency, since this is for the benefit of the public, the direction is for you to comply. So what will happen if you don't submit? I think that's, the, that's another question. What would happen if yeah, you yeah. don't submit? So what would happen is you get, most likely you would get a letter from DOE within, uh, I think, a month or two after the period because we do need to process and check. And we will remind you to comply. Rest assured that uh, the direction, and I, I'm just tying it to myself initially, the direction is for compliance. We don't intend to impose penalties. But for those who are still very, very curious as to the penalties, the penalties under the violations for the Energy Efficiency Act can range from anywhere from 10,000 pesos all the way to a million pesos. Ah, so meron, meron po tayong penalties. And if need be, there's also criminal prosecution. I did not write the law, but it's a special provision. So these are things that you would look out for. But if there's any takeaway, Jupiter, and for our audience here, what we'd like to happen is for you to comply. Nothing beats compliance. Penalties is not a substitute for compliance. So please do take the time to comply. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And I think you already covered the second question. So let's proceed to the next. From the baseline, in terms of electricity consumption and fuel, how much reduction do we need to comply? Okay, another good question. At this point in time, since we have not yet updated the National Energy Efficiency and Conservation Plan, that's the equivalent of the Renewable Energy Plan for RE, this baseline would be on your actual consumption, the available consumption that you've had, ideally from the past five years. Your target will be your own designated establishment or, or company's desire for this. But there are some things that you should already take note of. While we are not saying the percentage of reduction, if you take a look at the new construction, the guidelines for energy conserving design for buildings, it's already indicative at least 1% of your demand, if it's a new construction or retrofit, should be sourced from renewable energy. So at the very least, you should have that if you're going for new constructions. But as of the moment, what we would see and what we would like to see in the submissions and even on the forms is a direction for you to go and start implementing efficiency suitable to you. Let me assure everybody that the DOE will not substitute the wisdom of the business sector in how they proceed with their operations. So you set your own targets, but you have to set a target. Whether that's modest or not, what I'm telling you is at this point in time, we do not have a sectoral benchmark within which, let's say, all those operating businesses with the total floor area of this should have only this energy intensity. There is none. What you need for the purposes of this compliance period and most likely for the succeeding compliance period is for you to just have a plan, fill out the forms, and demonstrate your commitment into going to a more sustainable direction, which is on energy efficiency and renewable energy projects. Thank you, sir. Sir Patrick, I think the next question here is uh, more of a question of timing. So here it goes. Should businesses focus on recovery over complying with this law, given that we are still reeling from the effects of COVID? Is this the right time to implement? You, you know, that, that that is a perfect, that's always a question. I, I have not done a webinar or an online event that has that question has not been shared. And my answer is this. If we go by the direction of the international energy agencies internationally, they are seeing that this is the opportunity for the energy sector to be more sustainable. Start embracing renewable energy and energy efficiency as the way of the future. So if in terms of timing, now, now more than ever, it's now is the time to shift to efficiencies because your buildings are not loaded, people are not yet at full capacity. You can see the extent by which you can improve and be more efficient. My takeaway for the businesses is this. When you invest 
in renewable energy and energy efficiency, it pays for itself. It results to lower operating costs for you. And with partners like later on, maybe they will become an ESCO, SN Aboitis, and the ESCOs later on that I, I earlier flashed, they will show to you that the investments that you put in here is already for your sustainable. It results to a longer term uh, reduction in operating costs. So if the concern is on the cost, then this is an appropriate investment because you are future-proofing your business establishments. I hope that answers it. I don't know if I can switch to vernacular to say it more bluntly, but now is the time to implement it because when you do resume, you want your operations to be efficient already. And mind you, I can look straight in the camera and tell you, we will get through this within the year or within two years, definitely. And you want to be at the forefront of making sure that we are goddamn efficient when we go back to full gear. Thank you. That's, that's a spirit. Okay. The next question is, uh, I think this is about on what, inform what information dissemination are you currently doing for customers to be aware of the EEC and its implementation? Okay. Uh, there are a lot of things that I flashed in terms of concepts uh, at the start. In fact, now we're doing the ones on Philippine on the energy label. There's a PubCon next year. I did mention to you what we're doing in capacitating the Office of Building Officials uh, with our local government unit uh, partners uh, through the year. Uh, for you, the reason why you're attending this and the reason why I am here as the end of this uh, uh, bureau uh, implementing this law is that this is our opportunity to share with you. And we've been doing the rounds uh, with forums like this and pushing it uh, to the public uh, for the awareness. And um, if uh, you are unable to comply, uh, then you will get a letter from us, as I did mention to you, probably a month or two after the 15th of April, if you are part supposed to be part of the list and you didn't get to submit your item. Yeah. Uh, the next question, sir, I think it's a good gesture. So um, can, we, can you share the list of ESCOs whom we can tap? I did send the, the presentation materials uh, in PDF uh, through SNAP, so they would be more than happy to share it with you at the end of this event, with, along with the other materials, I would suppose. I'm sure. Okay, Pop. Next question, sir. For the annual energy requirement from RE, what's the basis of sourcing the 1% of projected annual energy requirement, same level as RPS? Yes, that is exactly the, the rationale behind it. Uh, that was a, another frequently asked question. Why, why isn't it wrong that you're referring to the RPS? If you take a look at it, the building consumption of a facility is you know, cooling. There's a breakdown depending on the type. And if you say it at 1%, that's actually a small, wouldn't you say? Snap would probably tell you 1% is so doable. So why not? That's my question back to you. But the reason for this inclusion was that the law says that compliance includes compliance to the EEC Act includes energy efficiency technologies and systems, including the use of renewable energy. That was why we placed this in the requirements. Incidentally, the public consultations for the guidelines on energy conserving design for buildings, we've had four. Uh, the technical requirements were created by uh, industry partners and had the participation of the internal bureau. So the Renewable Energy Management Bureau for the DOE, along with some other units here, also recommended that, and it was uh, approved and adopted because it is aligned with the overall trust of the government under the Philippine Energy Plan to support the increased share of renewable energy. Thank you. Next question, if not the last. Uh, can you please go back? Mabilis yung tanong, hindi nabasa. Okay. okay, thank you. For buildings that are designed with LED light uh, lighting, high efficiency motors, and LED certified, how do we move forward? Actually, now, uh, well, the first thing is since people were saying that they're opting not to comply and asking for penalties, I think you will be best in the position to report that you're doing all of this. But the future, really, uh, I didn't include it in the slide because, you know, People would say it's expensive. Really, we're coming out with a policy on a building energy index, 
leading up to a zero energy building future. So the guidelines are just the start. The direction really is to have net zero buildings in the next decade or so, or sooner. And we are just mindful again of uh, the cause. We're doing all of the studies. Of course, when we bring this up to the public, we will back this up with the cost, the benefits, and the menu of incentives that government can offer so that businesses can go into these directions. The DOE is aware of the cost implication of some of these technologies at this point in time. And rest assured, we are working hard under the framework of CREATE, uh, the recently passed CREATE law, to ensure that energy efficiency projects with renewable energy continue to enjoy the benefits and incentives, uh, fiscal incentives under whatever prevailing law that we have. Thank you so much, Paul, uh, Sir Patrick. Again, it's really a crisp presentation, lucid explanation. And